everybody, welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica, and this is going to be one part of an entire week-long series of our second grade homeschool curriculum picks. So if you stick around, you're gonna see our math, language arts, science, and geography, and history, and electives, and basically everything that I have chosen and put together for a awesome second grade homeschool year. But I wanted to make sure that this disclaimer was in every video, so you're gonna see this every day, and that is that we will not be using everything that you see from start to finish, lesson by lesson, exactly how it's written. So we tend to choose things that work for us, where we need the help, where we want the help. Um, if it's language arts and it's a concept she knows, I am fine skipping those lessons. If it's science and it's something she's not interested in, I am fine skipping that. Um, I will link up here a video about how I set homeschool goals for the year so that you can see that. But I just want you guys to know that what you see is what I've acquired. So the things I think we're going to enjoy for second grade and the things that I've purchased or made to add to our year. It's not necessarily everything we're going to do step by step exactly how it's written. If you want a more real time view of what we're doing, make sure you're following me on Instagram and Facebook because that is pretty much where I post the most real time view of our homeschool. And make sure you're subscribed and that you hit that little bell notification icon so that you're notified every day when a new curriculum pick goes up this week. Today's subject is language arts. For the main portion of our language arts, we'll be using Grammar Galaxy. Now this is volume two, which is ProStar. We are currently still working through volume one, which is Nebula, but I wanted to have ProStar on hand because, Protostar, I'm sorry, on hand, because I have a feeling we're going to make it through Nebula probably in the first maybe two months of being in second grade. So we will go into this one when she finishes that one. Um, obviously no rush though. The next thing we have is Explode the Code. Now she finished Explode the Code 3 in first grade. She's actually working on Explode the Code 4 right now. So we will more than likely finish that one up first. Um, but this is Explode the Code 5. So I have no plans for her to get to a certain point, but I did purchase all of the Explode the Code. So we have through level eight. So we'll just do whatever she wants to do as far as that goes. The next thing I have for language arts is part of our Waldock Wizards and Wands. Now she actually asked me to bind these separately. So I did. So we have the charms, which is her copy work and the incantations, which is the different writing project and assignments. So that will be a big portion of our language arts this year as well. And that's from the Waldock Wizards and Wands curriculum. The next thing we have is the Jot It Down from Brave Writer. And then this is just her composition notebook from last year where we write some of the different stories that we come up with. Um, so we'll just continue using that to do stories. That's kind of like her free write type of composition book. So we use the Brave Writer program for those. And then because we are going to be doing Wild Out Wizards and Wands, which is um, obviously the Harry Potter books, I went ahead and got the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Arrow from Brave Rider. Um, looking through this, it may... I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll have to see. It could be a little bit too much for her, but if I stretched it out longer than a month and maybe gave her two weeks to do each of the copyworks versus one... Um, it might work out. I will let you guys know how we end up doing this. I just wanted to have it on hand since we were reading the book anyway. The next thing I have is the Evan Moore Skill Sharpeners Reading. I love these Skill Sharpeners because they're colorful and it um, is something that she can do independently. So like there's the story that she would read and there's a few different pages of um, you know, questions and activities that go along with that. So either when she needs something independent, when she wants something to do when I'm busy or like on midterms or final weeks for me, I like having things like this so that she has something that she can do that doesn't require as much assistance for me or as much, um, help and teaching for me. The next things I have are writing elements. So I don't necessarily need her to be the one to physically be writing it, but I wanted to expose her to different types of writing and get her kind of in the idea of what a story would include. So we'll be using this writer's toolbox, which is learn how to write letters, fairy tales, scary stories, journals, poems, and reports. So it just gives you different tools that you can use to learn to write those. And then we will also be using the Usborne My First Story writing book. Um, it just kind of walks you through like mix and matching 
about the author's characters, descriptions, actions, beginning, middles, and end, and story planning and ideas in a very fun way. So I thought that would be a good way to get her, you know, exposed to different kinds of writing and proper writing. The next things I have are all from Esborn, and they're kind of like extra supplemental things. So this is their grammar and punctuation book, and it has exercises that go along with it. This will probably go in our morning basket. Um, let me open it up to the table of contents for you. So here you can see all of the different concepts that are covered. And then it's basically two pages. So you have the front of the page that tells you kind of what a verb is and gives you an exercise of um, something to do for that concept. And then on the back, it reiterates what they are and shows you the answers. So you can see like, for instance, let's see here, proper nouns. A proper noun is the name of one particular person or thing. The names of people and places such as Roberta or New York are proper nouns. And so are the names of the months and days. So then which are the proper nouns and you circle them. So I'm not sure if we'll write in here or if I'll just have her point to them so we can do it again. And then you flip it over and it says proper nouns start with a capital letter. So it gives them a little more information, tells them a little bit more about it, and then gives them the answer. So I just really like that it was kind of short and simple and sweet. So we'll definitely be doing that this year. And then this is part of the Usborne Key Skills. It's a pack of four. You can get it in introductory, intermediate, or advanced. This is the introductory set. And it has grammar and punctuation and spelling that's part of the English. It's wipe clean, so I like that it can be done over and over again. Um, some of this is review for her. Some of it is new. But it's just kind of a fun thing. It works very well for car schooling or for something to strew because it's different and it's fun and it's wipe clean so it's less intimidating for kids. So um, I also really love that there are answers in case you're not sure. And then there's notes for grown-ups in these. So it kind of walks them through um, notes for them and different activities that you could do to reiterate the things that were taught in here. So here's the grammar and punctuation one. And again, it has the same thing in the back. The last thing I have to show you is the Good and the Beautiful. Now, I was sent level two of the Good and the Beautiful because um, of an upcoming giveaway. So stay tuned on my Instagram channel for that. So this is was sent to me. Now, we are not done with level one yet. Um, we didn't make it through level one last year. We almost finished it, but it just... We were just having some complications with it. I don't know if she's not mature enough or it just doesn't work for her at all. So I am not saying that we will be using this or we won't be using this. I have it. So we may be using it. We will probably use the reader. She did read through this once and then is about halfway through the second time. Um, so we will probably at least at, at very least read through the reader because she actually really likes the readers in these. And then we will have to see. Like I said, I'm not going to say that, yeah, we're using the Good and the Beautiful because we didn't finish level one because she got very frustrated with it. It was too much for her um, and she just was not enjoying it. And my number one thing is that she loves learning. So if she's not enjoying something, I try to reevaluate. So that reevaluation took the Good and the Beautiful out of the picture for us. So I have level two. We will see if she wants to finish this without frustration or if she wants to maybe move on to level two and see if that's easier for her or it will be up to her. If it causes the same amount of frustration, it will not be part of our second grade lineup. And I will let you guys know that in our mid-year update as well as our final year at review update so that you'll know where we're at. But I did want to show them to you because I do have them. So it is something that could potentially be um, pulled out and used throughout our second grade year. All right, so there you have it. That is our second grade curriculum choices for language arts. Make sure you stay tuned because there is more videos coming at you this week for the rest of our curriculum picks. There will be one every day this week. So stay tuned, subscribe, and click that little notification bell icon so that you will be notified every day this week when a new video goes up. Thanks for watching.